Welcome back to the KeyCAD 9 tutorial series. Following our last video where we finalized the schematic, we're now moving on to the crucial stage of PCB design. This is where our electronic schematic will take physical form as a circuit board with all the components placed and connected by copper tracks. Before we continue, a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They offer PCB manufacturing and assembly services with quick turnaround and competitive prices. You can upload your Gerber files directly, choose your board specification and get an instant quote. Don't get hung up on choosing the colour of your PCB, there are many options to choose from. They support a wide range of options including multi-layer boards, flexible PCBs and assembly for both surface mount and through hole components. PCBWay also hosts a shared projects community where designers can share their work and browse open source projects. It's a good resource if you're looking for inspiration or reference designs. So once again, thanks to PCBWay for supporting this channel and sponsoring this video. You'll find a link in the description if you'd like to try them out for your next project and get a bit of a discount for yourself. I also share my projects on the PCBWay community page, so you can check out my projects there too if you want to order them for yourself. Now, back to the video. In this video, we're going to take a detailed tour of the KiCad PCB editor interface and this is to understand all the available tools. Then we're going to set up all the different PCB design rules and settings necessary to build our PCB design. So let's get started. So in the last video, we finished our schematic, we created our below materials and made sure that every component has a footprint attached. As you can see, I've got two components here that don't have a footprint attached. So I'm just going to add them now. And I know for that, I want a 2.54 pitch header pins, as you can see on this drawing over here. So those are these two headers here. Obviously they're not real components, so that's why I don't have a footprint for them. So from the schematic, we want to go over to the PCB design. And in order to do that, what you can do is go back to the menu. So over here and click the PCB editor button. Alternatively, what you can do is when you're in your schematic editor, you can press this button over here and that will take you to the PCB editor page. When we get to this page, the first thing you want to do is fill out your schematic sheet details. So that's what I'm going to do first. So issue date, any revision, title, so this is ESP32. Now A4 should be fine for us in this case, but sometimes you may want to change to A3 and you can change the size of the paper over here. If you wanted to select A3, you can do so. I'm gonna leave it as A4 for the time being. And you can see all the information that we filled in over here appears down here. Later in the tutorial series, I will show you how to create your own sheet template as well. So let's get started with the interface first. So at the very top, you have the menu bar. Over here, you have some quick access settings. So you can transition between the schematic and the PCB editor with this button over here. You have your console, but we're not going to be using that at the moment. On this side, you have some other settings that are useful as well. So you can turn the grid on and off. You can change your coordinate system if you want to. You can change your um, units. So if you're working in millimeters, mils or inches, but I normally work in millimeters. So that's what I'm going to stick with. I like to turn this on. It just makes it easier to see where you're pointing. And that is basically the crosshairs. So the two white lines you see across the screen. This lets you draw vertical lines. So let me just quickly explain what that means. So I'm just going to take this line. I, I'm on the edge cut layers. I'm going to change my grid to one mil. So you can see I've got a 45 degree line or a 90 degree line. If I turn this off, I can do any lines you can see. So basically this setting lets you do right angle lines or 45 degree lines only. I don't normally use that, but it might be useful for some applications. Now rat nest I always have on and I'll show you what that does later on. And these are just different view modes for the layers and I will bring in the components and I'll show you what that does later on as well. So if you have a lot of zone fills, you can basically hide them if you want to using one of these buttons over here. You can hide your wires, your tracks, and this button is to toggle this tab over here. This is for the properties window. So if you had some components in here, for example, let's pull in this connector over here. You can see all the properties for that. So quite useful if you're editing loads of different components at the same time. Most of the time I have it turned off. Now we just got to the PCB editor. We filled in this section over here. The next thing to do is basically this option over here, which is the board setup. So board setup is very important because it lets you decide your stack up. You can decide your number of components and you can also set your design rules over here. 
I won't go into specific design rules over here because it's a KiCad 9 tutorial series, not a PCB design tutorial series. So you can set all your defaults. You can see I can set my copper layers to four or all the way up to 32 layers if I want to. So I'm just going to keep it to two layers for the time being. You can do impedance controlled as well, which is a printout that you can get on your PCB. You can specify the type of board that you're using. You can also specify the color of your silk screen, your mask and your dielectric. The most important bit is specifying the thicknesses. So fill in this detail from your preferred PCB supplier. So I'm going to be filling this in from PCB way. There's more options here for the board finish. So this obviously gets into very specific use cases. So in your text and graphics defaults, you've got the default sizes for your silk layers, your copper layers and things like that. So you can change them if you need to. I don't generally change them, but one of the things I do like to change is the precision. So you can go to 0, 0.0 or 0, 0.00. And now design rules is very important. So make sure you set that up according to the PCB manufacturing house that you're going to use. Make sure to follow the rules. I won't go into all the details, but you will get all of these parameters from your PCB fabricators website generally. So fill out all of them and make sure you're not falling foul of any of the design rules that they have. So this will essentially make sure that the PCB design house can manufacture your board. Now this is um, obviously very important to set up and I generally have some predefined track widths that I like to use. So 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 1 and then via size I like to go for 0 0.45, 0 0.2 and a slightly larger one so 0 0.3 and 0 0.55. Now I know these just work for PCB way, but make sure you are setting them up as per your requirements. Now in the schematic video, obviously we set up some design rules. So if I just quickly go back to there and show you them, those design rules were set up using net classes. So you can see we have a USB net class, we have a high speed net class, we have a two amp, one amp and a default. Now how that works in PCB design side is if you go to here, and you go to your net classes, you basically have all of these net classes over here as well. So what you can do is set up design rules for your different net classes. So for example, I've given 0.6 clearance on the USB 90R and I've given a 0.6 clearance on the high speed lines. Now I've gone for fairly large via sizes over here and then I've got my differential pair and everything, which obviously you should follow your requirements for your PCB. For my two amp and one amp, I've set the default track width to 0.78 and 0.3. So I need to make sure I meet them all the time and KiCad will do that for me automatically. You have custom rules. I don't generally use that. You've got your text variables. I don't generally use that as well. And this I generally leave as it is, but this will basically change the level of warning that the DRC check gives you. If you, for example, if you have a VIA is not connected or connected only on one layer is given as a warning, but you can turn that into an error message if you want to, or you can ignore things if you are deliberately breaking some rules for your PCB design. Again, I leave this as the default settings and it works fine for me. On the right hand side, we have the appearance tab, which is this over here. Inside the appearance tab, you have your layers, you have your objects and you have your nets. So obviously at the moment, there are no components, so we don't have any nets. So let me just bring in the components from the schematic side. And to do that, you basically press this button or you can press F8 on your keyboard. So press that button, leave three of these ticked. We don't have any footprints at the moment. If we did have some footprints, it would be replaced with those specified in the schematic. And the last one, we can delete locked footprints. So if, if you're using that function. So then click the update PCB button and that gives you all the components. So if you move your mouse around, you can move all the components. And you can see these are all the components from the schematic side. And now we have nets over here as well. So we can turn off different nets if you want to. So for example, I'm turning off the 3v3 net over here. Now, if you concentrate on this line, you can see I'm turning off that net. You might do this if you're trying to focus on just like one part of your design and all the nets are getting in your way. If you want to turn off all your nets that are visible, you can press this button. You can also make them curved which I don't like to do because I find it a bit distracting. So generally I leave them straight and don't click this button over here. Now we set up the net classes on our schematic side, which gives us all of this. So what we can do over here is control the different nets using our net classes. So most of our nets are default. So if I hide the default, you can see a lot of them are gone. If I hide my one amp net classes, you can see some of them go. That's because those nets have been set up with the one amp 
necklace. The same thing applies for the two amp, the high speed. We've also got a different color for the high speed as well. Let's set a color for the one amp. And you can see the same thing happens for USB 90R as well. So net classes, very important. And I think you should use them in most of your designs unless they're very simple designs. Now we've set some colors up over here. So let me just change that to red. Now these colors currently are only shown on the rat nest, basically showing you where connections are going. You can change the settings so that the color is not shown anywhere for everything. Or you can change it such that everything gets colored that way. So including the copper layer as well. You can see my copper layer over here is going to be green. Now if I go back to here and change this to rat nest, you can see it changes back to the color that we have specified in the layers tab. And this is an additional setting for the rat nest. So at the moment, we've got our rat nest for everything. But if we turn off our front layer, you can see all the rat nests disappear. But you can leave them on if you click this button. I hide my front layer and you can see all the rat nests there. Now, I've never really used the presets tab. Now, it could be useful if you're trying to do some prints for your design or if you're trying to check your design in a very specific way. One of the most useful tools I find is the selection filter. So once your design gets very complicated, obviously, you're going to have your text. You're going to have components. You're going to have like lines. You're going to have tracks everywhere as well. So what you can do with this is turn on filters so that you can only select for example, let's say we only want to select a footprint, then that's what we can do. We cannot select this text, for example. So that's very useful. And let's say you're just tidying up your silk screens. You can basically turn everything off, select the text, and now you can only select that. So if you accidentally click on, let's say, your component, you can see you can't select the component at all. So this selection filter is very useful, and I think you should always use it. It's slightly bugged on mine in that I cannot resize it. So I'm just going to leave it out for the time being. That's everything in the Nets tab. Let's have a look at the Objects tab. Fairly straightforward. You can basically hide things from your schematic. So you can hide your footprints. You can hide images. You can change opacity of them. You can um, ch change the way locked components look. So if I was to lock this component in place, locking a component in place means you can't move it unless you select moving a locked component specifically from your selection filter down here. So let's say I select that, then I can move this component. So obviously by default that stays off. So I can't move this. And you can see I get a large pink shaded area around the courtyard of the component. And you might not want that. So you can turn them off, for example, by clicking this button over here. I don't use most of them. I sometimes use the footprints hide. Sometimes I will hide the zones. But other than that, I generally leave everything else as is. So this one here over here is kind of the most important one that I use on this objects tab. Now the layers tab is fairly self-explanatory. You basically got all your layers for your PCB design, including your kind of fabrication and your assembly layers as well. In this tab, you can hide your different layers if you want to. You can change the color if that's your thing. And you can select what layer you're working on. So front layer, back layer. So this is a two layer board. We don't have the inner layers here at the moment. If we were to change it to a four layer board by clicking the board setup button, going to physical stack up and let's say we select four layers. You can see I've got inner layer one and inner layer two over here. This little triangle shows you the active layer. Let's change back to two layers. Now the way you use these layers is very important. Obviously a lot of it is your PCB design dependent, such as copper, adhesive, paste, silkscreen, mask, edge cuts, and front courtyard. The other ones, such as user drawing, user comments, user one, two, three, four, I use those layers for my assembly drawings and my fabrication drawings. So if you were to add a fabrication note for your PCB design, you'd basically select that layer. You can do your drawings if you want on that layer. You can also add text on that layer. And what that means is you can avoid printing this layer in your Gerbers, but you can specifically print those layers when you do your control P. So let's say I selected edge cuts and F fab. Obviously I don't have anything at the moment in my edge cuts layer. So F fab is basically edge of all my components. So you can see most of this is from my library and organized. So our fabrication layer is this, and this allows you to generate a assembly drawing quite easily. This panel over here is for your different drawing tools as that's the best way I can describe it. But you can add your components if you were doing it that way and you don't have a schematic. You can add tracks. You can change the length of a single track. Now all of these settings are in the top menu as well, obviously more hidden. 
So this is a quick access for the different tools that are available in the top menu bar. You can add wires, um, zone fills, cl zone clearances, lines, circles, different shapes. Um, with KiCad 9, they introduced the Bezier curve, so you can add that as well. You can import images if you want to in your design. You can add text boxes, tables, dimensions. You can change the origin. You have a measurement as well. So if you wanted to do a measurement on your PCB, you have a measure tool as well. So fairly straightforward. All of these settings also have a shortcut. So let's say you wanted to add a component. The shortcut is A. For tracks, it's X. For everything else, I think slowly you will just pick up all the different shortcuts as you use KiCad more and more. Some very important settings are the zoom in and out. So you can use your mouse wheel up and down to zoom in and out. You can press the home button and that selects everything. This button over here can be quite useful as well. So if you click that, the shortcut for it is hard to get to, but you can modify shortcuts if you want to. And it lets you zoom to selection. So I selected one portion of my circuit and you can zoom onto that if you want to. Uh, most of the time I will just use mouse wheel up and down to zoom where I need to. So this is mouse wheel up and this is mouse wheel down. You don't have to worry about any of these settings at the moment. Uh, we'll go through them when we are finalizing the PCB design. This button over here is the design rule checker and it's something you should do when you're completing your PCB design. And it basically just shows you if you've missed out any tracks. So for example, if you've got any unconnected tracks or if you've placed components on top of each other or something like that. So if you've made any mistakes, it's good to perform a DRC check when you're finalizing your PCB design. Now preferences menu, you can mess around with it. It lets you change your color schemes and everything. You can go to different color schemes and you can download some themes um, from the plugin manager as well if you want to. You've got loads of different settings in here. You've got your hotkeys as well if you want to change any of them around. But I've never found myself needing any of these options. I So basically just leave it as is. Now that was a fairly thorough overview of the interface, but I didn't cover every single option, obviously. That would take too long and you will be able to get by with everything I showed you in order to kind of build your first PCB. As you do more PCB designs using KiCad 9, you'll, you'll kind of start to appreciate the different settings that are available and anything that you might need. You'll probably do a Google search or something for them. So I'm not going to go through everything, but that should cover majority of the options and the settings that are in KiCad 9. Some other settings I will cover when I'm doing the actual layout. So I'm going to keep this video fairly short. So in this video, obviously, we imported our components. In the next video, we'll start doing our layout. And I'll show you how I do that from beginning to the end. So basically doing our outline and then placing all the components where we need them and doing the tracking. So stay tuned for that. And if you're finding this helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for my next video. And see you in the next tutorial.